Hello friends and family from around the world, this is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on October 20th, 2024. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to The Daily Do, giving you your world update and as well space weather. Always starting out here looking at the last two days of imagery as we have fully entered into solar cycle 25, and the last 24 hours has been quiet since last night's update. We have eight sunspot regions that are Earth-facing right now. We've seen multiple M-class solar flares and some coronal mass ejections. So geomagnetic instability is on its way in impacting our planet 22nd into the 23rd. Having a look at incoming and outgoing, this is where we saw most of the activity, the M-class solar flares, pretty active and fiery sunspot region turning away there. Amazing imagery here brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory, mixed with daily events worldwide, having a look at multi-spectrum, pointing out the last two days of events, active sunspot regions, and as well, plasma filaments to watch, and coronal holes. Two outgoing coronal holes right there, and another one building equatorial region, getting ready for the Earth-facing party. Thanks, everybody, for watching right now, pressing play, and being a part of this channel, keeping humanity aware and prepared as we have now entered into Solar Cycle 25, which is a maximum, lasting upwards of 11 years. Right now, we have eight sunspot regions, and we've seen such an increase in the sunspot numbers over the past year as we have embarked now into solar cycle 25 looking at these sunspot regions in motion eight of them and a pretty big one in movement and sophisticated one turning not into necessarily an erupting something i wanted to share here with you but there was this a five is our sun seven earthquake during solar minimum on the right movement. hand there back in 2019 not necessarily an very erupting, quiet sun but there was to today, a 5.7 earthquake maximum, multiple sunspot regions Current space weather conditions, there are none to report. Solar winds are coming in at 382 kilometers per second. And that's right around average. Solar X-ray flux hanging out into the strong sea range. Nothing since these four or five M-class solar flares yesterday. Solar proton flux is low. Geomagnetic activity. Strongest hopping up to a KP5 yesterday. And this is why, as this is our space weather spiral brought to you by NOAA. Watching the impact times. This is our next event, 23rd. It's was space prediction spiral showing outgoing CME from the cresting view. Just missing Mercury along the way. Notable on the right-hand side there path of all the geomagnetic instability here is a look at tonight and tomorrow's aurora forecast a little bit stronger tomorrow night and not too much to talk about tonight so the sunspot number progression that is pretty much what depicts our solar cycle when we see the increased solar cycle numbers or sorry sunspot numbers we know that we are in the maximum and right now we are double the predicted values by NASA. And having a look here back to 1950, these are the values of sunspot regions. And we are at the height of solar maximum, solar cycle 25. And these sunspot numbers go all the way back to the late 1700s, folks. So we're most likely going to see some more strong solar flares like this one here, the X9 class solar flare that occurred back in March. Zap. We're going to see multiple strong solar flares and sunspot events and increased geomagnetic storms, solar storms, therefore entailing more auroras, more intense auroras and northern lights. 
Amazing times to be alive. I'm so happy that I'm able to share all this imagery and information with you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of this family and community. Solar Cycle 25, a solar maximum, is here. Having a look at Alaska 3, showing the broad spectrum of space weather, leaving our sun. No major solar flares since the last Halo CME that had taken off on the 17th of October. A couple CMEs in the last few images there taking off in a northward fashion. But again, no CMEs heading our way. We do have minor geomagnetic instability into the 23rd of October. Now let's have a look at earthquakes as things have picked up a little bit. We've seen multiple deep earthquakes here, the Fiji region and southward towards Kermadec, 538 kilometer depth there, 588 kilometer depth, 5.4 magnitude earthquake as well, a very deep 609 kilometer depth earthquake today. So three deep thrust earthquakes in the Fiji region, heads up. Stay aware and prepared, folks. We're going to see something big here pop in the southwest Pacific Rim. Minor activity continues all across Indonesia. 4.8, 4.6 Palu. 4.6 earthquake, Burma microplate. 4.6 Kyrgyzstan. Quite across the Atlantic and as well South Sandwich Islands. South American plate seeing some activity today. Argentina with a 4.6 deep, 230 kilometer depth. Caribbean plate, quiet yet again today. United States, as you can see here, USGS is reporting 240 earthquakes the past 24 hours. That is definitely up since last night. Minor activity building south of Los Angeles and towards the Salton Sea. Westmoreland and Neeland. No major swarms to talk about. But notable activity up into the Pacific Northwest. Washington. And Oregon. We've seen the, the earthquakes piling up this past week. So heads up, stay safe and be ready. Notable seismicity continuing through Alaska. But too quiet right here. And it's been very quiet in Hawaii. Look at the last seven days for shakers around the world. We definitely are missing a few earthquakes through Hawaii. Things are building up into the North American plate. Largest earthquake this week is a 6.0 in Mexico. And as well as 6.0 magnitude earthquake, Turkey. Luckily, we have not seen a large earthquake for quite some time, but it's a little bit worrisome. So heads up, my friends and family. Earth is changing and the big shakers and movers are ready to help this along. Now let's have a look at world weather here as we do have... Tropical storm, Hurricane Oscar, who is now Category 1, heading towards Cuba as a Category 1. There's also Tropical Storm post-remnant low, Nadine, who scooted across Guatemala. And then we've got Disturbance 1, who definitely in the next seven days will turn into a strong cyclone heading westwards towards Hawaii. Stay tuned to the forecast. If you haven't seen the weather forecast, check out last night's video. That gives you the most up-to-date forecast. We've also got Tropical Depression 22. As this one, in the end, eventually will be turning into a super typhoon. Big low-pressure system here in the North Pacific. Large atmospheric river of moisture penetrating Washington and B.C. coast. Some areas, higher elevations, receiving over 200 centimeters of snow. The deluge has begun. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your daily due. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe. Share with your friends and family from across the world.